Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are enmities, contentions, wraths, quarrels, dissensions, envies, and such like, of the which I foretell you, as I have foretold to you, that they who do such things shall not obtain the kingdom of God. Verse taken from the lesson for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Some Sundays ago, we heard about the Pharisee and the publican praying in the temple. Recall how the Pharisee felt free to vocalize, at least interiorly, to God. And it says in that gospel, he was talking to himself. In other words, he was his own God. What he considered the faults and failings of others. He was looking around. We also heard recently the parable about how the unjust steward was reported to the rich man. He was accused of wrongdoing. And it must have been serious as his position was lost. He was made to leave. He was dismissed. Now this brings up an important issue, namely, when can we reveal or speak of the faults and failings of others? To whom can we speak of them without failing ourselves or falling into the works of the flesh mentioned by St. Paul? Enmities, contentions, wraths, quarrels, dissensions, envies. I know a lady who grew up attending an all-girls school run by Benedictine sisters. If a child told on another child without cause, what is commonly called tattletelling. The sisters made that girl wear a tail for the rest of the day. Clearly, they were trying to teach a lesson. There is a time to speak and a time to be silent. Tattling is an act of reporting without need on someone's rule-breaking behavior or actions usually to get that person in trouble. But it is not tattling when a child tells a parent or other adult about something that could cause serious damage, harm, such as took place in the parable of the steward, the unjust steward, or something was damaging, they had to tell. Everyone knows instinctively that tattletelling in children is not a good thing. Because, among other things, the child is in danger of pride. When we can see the wrong in others and tell on them, we think we're better. Children often do these things to get on the parent or teacher's good side, to grow in stature out of due order. It's also a shortcut in problem solving and to gaining power and position. Tattling is an easy way, but wrong way, to get what we think is rightly ours or to have justice served in some dispute. We can recall his majesty said in the gospel and complained about this very thing. He's saying, who made me your judge? In other words, you have come to me out of due order. And so we ought to train children to hold their peace, suffer the evil until the differences can be worked out or the rule breakers are discovered without their having to tattletale. It is part of growing up to deal with unpleasant situations. That is, unless life and limb are at stake, you have to do something. So again, we ask, when can we reveal the sins of others? When can we reveal what is hidden or secret? In the Vatican, I'm sure there are, there's other places like this. One prelate had above his desk a big stuffed fish 
Maybe it was a swordfish or something. And it had a hook. And it said underneath, if I had not opened my mouth, I would not have been caught. In his spiritual exercises, St. Ignatius of Loyola gives us this sound advice. It always makes me squirm. One must not speak an idle word. By idle word, I mean one which does not benefit either me or another and is not directed to that intention. Hence, words spoken for any useful purpose are meant to profit one's own or another's soul. The body or the temporal goods are never idle. Nothing must be said to injure another's character or to find fault. Start squirming. Because if I, out of due order, reveal a mortal sin that is not public, I sin mortally. If a venial sin, then I sin venially. And if I reveal a defect, I show a defect of my own. But if the intention is right, in two ways, one can speak of the sin or fault of another. The first, when the sin is public, as is the case of public criminals, politicians, and so on, and of a sentence given in judgment or in a, of a public error which is infecting the souls with whom one comes into contact. So someone's influenced by CNN or what's going on in various realms. We can correct that. It's okay. We can talk about it. Public things we can speak about more openly. Second, St. Ignatius says, when the hidden sin is revealed to some person that he may help to raise him who is in sin. Raise him who is in sin. I need to help him. Supposing, however, that he has some probable conjectures or grounds for thinking that he will be able to help him. Thank you, St. Ignatius. But the last one's a little tricky, isn't it? St. John of the Cross comes to our aid in the dark night of the soul, he speaks about those who reveal hidden things using the excuse that they want others to pray for them, pray harder for the sinful person. He says, they are not inspired by God, but by the devil. Don't use prayer, in other words, as a reason to tell someone's fault. I've done this a number of times to people. I say, why are you telling me this? Well, I just want you to pray for them. Why don't you just tell me their name and say, this, could you please pray for this person? That's all you need to say. I don't need to know all the detail. In general, there are three causes justifying the revelation of what is hidden or a secret. There's three reasons we can do this. And it has to be the right person. Number one, when I have the consent of the one whose secret it is. In some cases, this consent may be reasonably presumed. Thus, for example, an employee may criticize the work of a fellow worker or a foreman to his boss, who in turn may manifest this criticism, though not the one criticizing, to the deficient worker to help them improve. Is that not Pretty much what happened in the gospel parable about the unjust steward. A certain rich man had a steward, it reads. The same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said to him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Notice that it was reported to the proper official. This is not idle chatter. Notice also that it must have been serious for the unjust steward to lose his job. In the, the story of the Pharisee and the publican, he left unforgiven, did the Pharisee. It must have been serious. Second of all, when the secret or hidden truth is made known from another source, thus a lawyer or doctor, for example, might discuss a hidden matter with a fellow professional who has discovered the secret from another source. Notice that they keep it amongst themselves rather than spreading it abroad. Again, 
This is not idle speech. This is not tattletaling. Finally, number three, when we can avert serious harm which cannot be avoided by any other means. Such a harm has various levels. It could be that the common good of the church or the state is threatened. Thus, one should reveal the existence of a plot of revolution, rebellion, or riot. A doctor could disclose a carrier of contagious disease. The identity of counterfeiters should be made known. A Catholic knowing that a man proposing marriage is already married or under religious vows is obliged to reveal this to the pastor. Thus we have marriage bans. Ye are to declare it. Further, it could be that an innocent party is threatened. Hence, a doctor who might know that a prospective husband had a serious infectious disease would be obliged to disclose this to the future bride if the man refused to do so himself. Apart from these serious causes, we ought to remain silent in a way using the words of the great Russian novelist Dostoevsky, who who said we ought to be like a tomb, a grave, as it were. It doesn't leave you. The sacred scripture put it like this. Hast thou heard a word against thy neighbor? Let it die within thee. Oh, how I wish I could fulfill this perfectly. Hast thou heard a word against thy neighbor? Let it die within thee, trusting that it will not burst thee. At the hearing of a word, the fool is in travail as a woman groaning in the bringing forth of a child. Hot potato. Ring, ring. Did you hear? There is one particular case I would like to speak about, namely when one spouse falls into some kind of a hidden sin. Should they reveal that sin to the other spouse or some accountability partner? That seems to be the fad in our times. There's even a book that's out. It's called Breaking Free. It's been out for a number of years. It has a sort of 12-step program, Breaking Free from Certain Internet Addictions, in which the 12-step is to reveal this sin to a spouse or accountability partner. Mind you, these are shameful sins, especially. No! The answer is No! This is false and potentially very damaging. In his discussion on the virtue of truthfulness, Blessed Francis Palau asks, must an unrighteous person present himself as he is to the eyes of others? In other words, must he reveal his sins? No, he says. If he is a hidden sinner, he would add to his sin one more sin, namely that of scandal. Harmful it is to be vicious, true, but worse it is to be declared as such. And it is an intolerable scandal to boast for being so. Maybe they wouldn't boast, but one can be tempted. The hypocrite must present himself before God, says Palau, as he is. And in his conscience, what he would like to be before others. What he's striving to be but not the contrary, before God what he wants to be and before others what he is on the inside. Shameful sins especially should be kept shameful and not brought out for open discussion. They should be hidden with Christ in the confessional, not become like arrows that deeply wound the spouse. The accountability partner is the priest in confession. If he's a good one, he'll delay your absolution and make you do something about it. The 12th step should not be followed in this program for it will only add sin onto sin. In any case, all of us need to avoid becoming big boy and big girl tattletales. We often tell on others showing that we have some power or ascendancy over them. We tell on others because we secretly desire 
to be a prophet, able to see the present state of things and predict the future failures of others around us. And we'll be able to say, I told you so. We want to be in the know. Children often resort to tattling because they're learning about the rules, what it means to break them. They are developing morals, figuring out the difference between right and wrong, naturally putting emphasis on being fair as they see it. And so when they see someone doing something they should not be, they feel the need to tell. Are we any different? We sense something unjust going on. We're in the wrath of God. The passion of the church is in full bloom. There's a lot going wrong. A lot. As the world around us jettisons traditional morals, we struggle to remain true. Thus the tendency to tell and talk to others and make comparisons and talk about all the failures around us. As stated earlier, children often tattle because they want to get on the parent or teacher's good side and because they think they are they may be a reward for them not doing that bad thing their sibling or classmate is doing they may also be motivated by jealousy such as a child may tattle to gain an edge over the brother or sister or classmate again are we any different trying to get ahead of our fellow parishioner employee or family member we tell Young children also lack the tools to negotiate and manage conflicts. A child who feels a sibling is not being fair is often best helped by the parents by having them not intervene every time they have a problem, but to show them how to get along. The same is true of us. We cannot always have the pastor or those in authority intervene I remember falling into this tendency myself as a youngster. My good father would look at me and say, stop being the sheriff. In other words, stop monitoring what everyone else is doing wrong and reporting it to the judge. And mind your own affairs. I think there's a lot of sheriffs around here. Although more rare and exceptional... Sometimes people really are prophetic, having received an insight from God or even a supernatural prophetic light to see what's happening and going to happen. Does that immediately mean they must tell all and reveal all that is going on? No. Even someone so enlightened must be cautious. Listen to these words of Sister Lucia as she explains why she did not come out with the prophecies of Fatima until much later. Even the one about the unknown light that would signal the beginning of World War II. She said, it may be that some people think that I should have made known all this some years ago. She's writing her memoirs under order, obedience. Why? Because they consider that it would have been twice as valuable years beforehand. This would have been the case if God had willed to present me to the world as a prophetess. But I believe God had no such intention when he made known these things to me. If that had been the case, I think that in 1917, when he ordered me to keep silent, and this order was confirmed by those who represented him, he would, on the contrary, have ordered me to speak He did not. For me, keeping silent has been a great grace. Someone needs to tell that to all the bloggers. For me, keeping silent has been a great grace. What would have happened had I described hell? Being unable to find words which exactly express the reality. Precision is needed here. We're talking about Holy Mother Church. We're talking about salvation of souls. I'm just going to blog away what I think. That's going to solve the problem. 
for keeping me silent has been a great grace. What would have happened had I described hell? Being unable to find the words which exactly express the reality for what I say is nothing and gives only a feeble idea of it all. I would therefore have said now one thing, now another. This is sounding a little familiar. One day I'll say this, one day I'll say that. Waiting, wanting to explain, but not succeeding in doing so. I might thus perhaps have caused such a confusion of ideas as even to spoil, who knows, the work of God. Thank you, Sister Lucia. God is the perfect parent. It is true that at times we have to speak. We have to say something for the greater good of the church and state or the individual. Let us be sure to speak to the right persons at the right time, as did those who reported the unjust steward. On the other hand, how many of us can stay silent to receive that great grace of Sister Lucia that she speaks of and to avoid causing yet more confusion to God's works? How many of us can be that tomb for what we hear that need not be passed along? Let us then avoid being big boy and big girl tattletales, but rather looking at the crucified Lord and say, if you can suffer that without complaint, help me to suffer the present trials without talking so much. For the fruit of the Spirit is charity. It is patience, goodness, long-suffering, mildness, and faith. May we all be saved souls together in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.